Hey yo, it's me, the little low G. Uh, it's Kyle here. Um, talk about wrestling. Uh, you know, you know, guys. I told you uh, I was going to talk about you know some of the things going on in wrestling, you know, with Hell in the Cell and stuff like that. But this weekend I got really busy, so uh, instead of just making separate videos talking about different things, I'm going to talk about a bunch of junk in this one simple video. So I'm going to talk about Daniel Bryan, uh, the Stephanie McMahon Hemsley era, 2.0. Um, and the, uh, 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 John Cena, both Randy Orton being back on top and even Sandow uh, for a little bit. So, uh, first I want to talk about, uh, uh, Hell in a Cell, um, and that whole debacle. Um, you know, what happened there with Michaels kicking Brian in the face, da 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 I have to say, uh, you know, I love Daniel Bryan, I do. But um, him being WWE champion, I am emotionally in exhausted now. Uh, I think Hell in a Cell obviously was the, the end for the feud between these two. But to not have uh, Daniel Bryan um, really be that guy to finally get his big payoff and let him run with the belt for a change, um, I, think is, 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 I, th I think it's a sad, poor decision. Um, on WWE's part because it's just it just it kind of just goes back to the fact that you know they just used Brian as another guy you know I mean they didn't have to give Brian a six seven eight month run as champion I mean but just just let him have his moment uh, you know I think he's he's had some great programs this summer he's beaten John Cena clean he's beaten Randy Orton clean uh, both of you know top of the two guys in the company for the title. And yet, on both occasions, they just never really let him run, run, let him have his moment and just run with it. And uh, I just think it's a little bit sad. And to me, like I said, I'm still a fan of Brian, but in terms of him being WWE champion, him getting his big payoff, I'm a little bit emotionally invested out of it uh, right now. I've heard some things saying that maybe Dan Bryan may win the Royal Rumble next year and he gets his big payoff uh, come WrestleMania. I don't know. Um, but until then, right now, Brian chasing for the WWE title, him becoming WWE champion, I'm done with it. I'm done. I still love Brian, but I'm, I'm just, I'm just done. I'm just done. WWE just killed it for me. Um, you know, and then you know, going back to you know, the the, the Damian Sandow. You know, the, there are a lot of people who were you know royally pissed and say that hey you know Dan Damian Sandow even though not his purposes he had a great match with John Cena but the fact that he you know lost to a one-armed man and you know his 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 cash in was a fail um you know some people think he, he was buried other people think he wasn't buried because he had he did just put on such a tremendous match with Cena that I think they kind of you know they kind of helped him out a little bit uh, my thing is this here. I said it once. I said it a, a, a lot, and I still thought about it. Damian Sandow never should have had the Money in the Bank briefcase um, in the first place. And I love Sandow. Sandow, I think, is one of the best mic skills in that company. One of the best characters uh, in that company. But Sandow never should have won the Money in the Bank briefcase. Here's why: um, because you know they, you know, m most of the time, most of the time, Money in the Bank winners. You know, the, at least they when they won Money in the Bank, they've they've done something. You know what I mean? You could say that you know these guys they've they've uh, they've been uh, U.S. champion, tag team champion, or something, or they've had some type of big feud or whatever before they won Money in the Bank and go on. Sandow doesn't have that um, at all. You know, Sandow never had that that big feud or that that won any you know mid card or lower titles or something you know to kind of give him some a little credibility before he wins that money in the bank briefcase he never had that that basic found that was set for him for him to you know to, to for them to build him up you know once he wins money in the bank he didn't have that and so by him not having that foundation and then on top of that you know how they treat money in the bank winners they have them lose every freaking match for like months on end week in and week out to me, I think it hurted Sandow. It really, it it, 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 it hurted him a lot. It did not help him uh, at all. And I know some people say, well, hey, Alberto De Rio, when he won money at the bank, he didn't win a single title or whatever. But Alberto De Rio did have some 
to a degree, some type of meaningful feuds. I mean, he did have a feud with Rey Mysterio when he first came out of the gate. He had a major feud with uh, Edge. Uh, he had a feud with Christian. So at least Del Rio, even though he hadn't won any times, he had something, you know, to kind of elevate and kind of build him up before he won that briefcase. Uh, and again, like I said, Sandow has not had that. Um, and now, you know, looking over the past week now, how they, how he's kind of being treated, it seems like now he's just uh, been a, a whooping cushion for, for, for John Cena. Uh, you know, just Cena just whooping him on Raw and whooping him on SmackDown. And, you know, if you're going to have him in a feud with Cena, not chase him for the title, and then have him lose each and every single time, it's... I don't think it helps Sandow. I, I just don't. It's my personal opinion. Second thing, uh, Randy Orton and John Cena both being uh, holding the top two titles um, in the overall company. Now, I said to myself, you know, hey, I made a video before. I said I didn't mind Cena being world champion because the belt needed to be off the Rio. Um, I wouldn't mind if they slapped the belt and put it on Jack Swagger. Uh, it needed to be off the Rio that bad. And it made sense to put on John Cena because the world title needed to be elevated. Um, to a degree, because it's just been pissed poorly in terms of quality. Then you have Randy Orton, who has the, the main number one belt, the WWE Championship. Now, I'm not really too hard on Randy Orton like I am most of the time with John Cena, because the way I look at it, Orton has not been WWE Champion for like three years. The last time he was World Heavyweight Champion, he was a babyface. No one liked that. There was even some sources that said he himself did not, did not like being a good guy. And Randy Orton had been in the doghouse for the last two years. So to see him, you know, fired up again as a heel, you know, the Randy Orton that we all love and miss and being his WWE champion, I don't mind it too much. Uh, or just I don't mind Randy being in the spot that he's in currently right now. My problem I do have, though, is that and this is a little bit of a concern for me, and it's that Randy Orton and John Cena, yet again, are the two guys that WWE go for when it comes to... Uh, 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 the, the, the Randy Orton and, and, and John Cena are like safety nets for John, for, for, for WWE. It's like when, when ratings are low, or it's always a, a ratings thing with WWE, but when ratings are low or something happens, they panic, and when they panic, they're like, we got to put John Cena and we got to put Randy Orton as the main guys. Bam. Once again, like I said, I don't mind Randy Orton getting the spot that he's in because he has been in the doghouse for two years. Unlike John Cena, that's just been consistently on top and just consistently in our faces and consistently on TV. So I'm not as harsh with Randy um, in, in, in this aspect, but i got to be realistic here. I'm getting kind of tired of WWE using Orton and Cena as safety nets because it's like when it comes to guys like Daniel Bryan, CM Punk, um, you know, whatever, any other superstar, you know, The Shield or whatever... It's like they use those kind of guys to fill in little voids or whatever or have them to be placeholders because what we really want, we really want Randy Orton. We really want John Cena. So right now, you're just a placeholder. And to me, I think it kind of it, it, it kind of it kind of damages development of future stars that could one day potentially be in that John Cena or Randy Orton spot because, you know, you, you just. You're not giving people, and people say, oh, they've given Punk a 434-day reign. They gave Brian main event at four pay-per-views in a row and beat John Cena clean at SummerSlam. That's fine. But, again, like I say, they give, here's how I see it. WWE, they give certain wrestlers a taste, but they really don't let them, if it's somebody that they personally themselves don't favor, they really don't give them the ball. Now, I will say CM Punk, the 340 434 day reign, they gave Punk the ball, Punk rolled with it, it was great. But on certain occasions, I really feel like WWE, they certain with certain superstars that they particularly themselves do not like, or favor, uh, I'll use the word favor, they don't really technically really give them the ball. They'll give them the ball, but it has a string attached to it. So it's like, you're just going to carry this just for a little bit, you're going to carry the ball, but once you carry the ball, you know, for, you know, an ex a certain amount of time, we're going to pull it out of your hands and, and just, just pull it and yank it out of your hands with the string attached to the ball. That's how I feel like with, with WWE and when it comes to certain superstars. And when they do that, they take the ball and they put it back in John Cena's court. They put it back in Randy Orton's court and they just use them as safety nets. And it's like, 
after a while, you kind of have to stop a little bit on relying so much on Orton, Cena, Cena, Orton, because after a while, they're not going to, they're the present, Orton and Cena are the present, but they're not the future anymore of WWE. They're not going to be around for the next 15 years or 20 years headlining pay-per-views and whatever. If they do, I think that would be bad company-wise uh, financially for WWE. Um, so, I, I just, I don't know. Now, a lot of people threw out, maybe, you know, with the two of the top guys having the, having the belts, they may, you know, unite the belts, have, you know, unify both belts. If they do do that, if that is the, if that is a long-term goal or a thought, I say please, I say go with it because I, I, I've said it many times before, I think having two world titles is too much. I think it's stupid. I think it's played out. Um, and I think that uh, having one main world title, I think, kind of helps a little bit uh, in, in creation of creativity of, of, of stars and how to make them rise as they, you know, try to reach that, that ultimate goal, uh, which is the, you know, the main world title. I had made a video about this, like, over the summer or earlier this year, uh, explaining that in detail, uh, why I, I think that. So, um, these are just my thoughts going on in WWE currently right now. Let me know what you guys think. Do you agree, disagree? Do you see my point? Uh, comment, uh, leave your thoughts in the comment box below. Subscribe. Peace.